Welcome back to the next episode of the V12 300cc Ferrari engine build from 12 brush cutters or uh, strimmers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so this is now showing a cam bearing support, which is that bearing there, small needle roller, because the camshaft will be going straight through there. I've had to re-drill, this is just like a, just a test barrel really, I've had to re-drill the spark plug hole because I'm now thinking I need to make the spark plug upright so it'll be something like that. The plasticine is just to hold it in place so it'll be an upright plug. I need to make some kind of um, spark plug cap and uh, that is because I'm trying to keep this dimension across here as small as possible. Uh, so the camshaft is this 6mm piece of rod or silver steel. I drilled out the lobe, which is all I'm going to be using. Got rid of the pulley, that was just plastic. So I've broken that off, but drill out the rest of that. And also drill it through here for a grub screw to hold it to the shaft. It's going to need to be pretty tight to hold it all on. Uh, and that camshaft fits in there. You can see there the cam followers. At the back, quite a lot of our clearance at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to keep this dimension across here. Sorry, it's in the fingers. That dimension as small as possible because that is what's going to be replicated it is, it's going to be pretty difficult to change his plugs, but you know, I'm kind of thinking the plugs aren't going to need changing that often. Uh, it's going to be a case of undoing all of these screws along the bank of the engine, lifting the camshafts up to get to the plugs, which it is a bit of a pain, but you know, the clearance is on the uh, adjusters here, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. You know, it's not like it's going to be doing lots of miles I would imagine you know one set of plugs once it's set up should last the lifetime of the engine really. Um, this was just uh, a couple of bits of metal that I welded together. Uh, so that is a little bit more tweaking on the barrel. Let's go over to the crank. So we've got some crank pieces here. I'm obviously not going to use all of these blades but I needed to strip them down um, to get all the cum rods and the bearings and the washers. So yeah, my original pin, spigot pin, false fit. I'm still moving along those lines. Um, but I'm up to a, an 8mm, you can see here, 8mm pin, interference fit with this part of the crank. These pins are for the cum rods. They're a bit longer than the original pins so that I can get two com rods on each journal and these main bearings are a little bit bigger than the originals they're 12 mil wide instead of 10 I think they're 26 diameter just a little bit more heavy duty uh, so the crank actually presses together quite easily you just use a vise because these are fairly small load items to push together So this is the pin. Uh, you can see there's a chamfer on the top. It's a solid pin and these are hardened and ground. Uh, that is the crank. The slight taper where it presses in. Let's put those two together. Oh, 
that's pressed in flush. Let's go back to the rest of the crank. So that now needs to be pressed together on this part of the crank. We're going to go round um, 120 degrees from that pin. And also when it's pressed together, it has to have a bearing on there. These are just a really nice slide fit um, on this part of the crank. And also that will support where this has been bored out and it's effectively uh, a tube. It also supports the outside of that so that it can't grow too much on the interference. Gives it a bit more support. Let's press that together. This is another stage of pressing the crank together because you have to make sure that there's no run out. So as you press each section, it needs to be checked for alignment. So this one's got quite a lot of run out. Um, so sort of 20 thou, 25 thou. So I'm just gonna reduce that by tapping it with a hammer the correct direction and closing it down in the vise to get it down to zero. Just close that off in the vise a bit. Down to 10. This is the technical hammer hit. And check it again. And that is perfect uh, use of a hammer. We are down to that's about a quarter of a thou. If you know what you're doing with a hammer, that's a perfect example of it. Doesn't that very often. So that's set up on the press. Let's push it together. Eight ton press makes it look pretty easy. Just trying to find the camera, sorry. Let's press together and slide that bearing across a bit. Same position now. Let's build the next part up. So, just going to build the next section of this up. A washer, a bearing, and another washer. Today, maybe you can still hear me. Let's put another washer there. Let's press that end of the crank on there. That's pressed in. So let's pull that out. another two on let's check it in the lathe this is the crank I'm using a 
M6 bolt is a dog. Dog drive, which just is a nice fit in there. That is how machine one half that fits together with the other one has a hole in it. It's getting quite long now. Last two rods to go on. A couple of washers. Bearing rod washer. Bearing rod, final washer, last piece of the crank. Let's press that back on, or on rather than back on. And then we'll have the most enormous press together crank. There it is, 300cc B12 crank. It's quite long. I'll just get a ruler and measure it. So it's about 15 inches total length. So I'm aiming for the block to be about 320. That's going to give me a 54 millimeter bore spacing. Uh, that wraps up this episode. Thanks for watching.